Providence Sports Panel here at Woody's Pub in Coquitlam with Ed Willis and Jason Botchford. Guys, uh, it is a million dollar question, uh, really a 70 plus million dollar question, I guess, uh, not knowing where the salary cap's going in the National Hockey League for next season, but uh, we know where the Canucks are, we know where they want to be, how do they get there and how soon? Well, I, I think the question is, like, what kind of term plan should they have? Like, it's an impossible, I agree, it, it's impossible to answer the question, when, when are they going to be good? But I think it, it's reasonable to say, like, what's your plan to get good? Is it, is it a three-year plan? Is it a four, five-year plan? Somewhere in there. I think a three-year, five-year plan, like, I honestly look at them as kind of ground zero of a rebuild. Like, they have some, some nice prospects coming that can make a difference but they don't really have the veterans that, that are gonna you know, cuddle them when they get to the NHL and help them win right away. They're not in a position that San Jose was in a couple of years ago to help these guys. They're not winning, they're off, they're a bad hockey team. So when these prospects arrive, they're going to be a bad hockey team. I think that you gotta look three, four, five years down the road and one of the, the, the main thing that you have to focus on is fixing the defense because this defense, it's not good enough. They never score. They can't put up points. They're not tough. Like that's a pretty bleak combo to putting all that together. So how are you going to fix it? And there's not a lot. Like there's not. I can't think of many ways other than drafting defensemen to fix it. Uh, there, there is one way that's getting lucky. That that's 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 the card they have to play. It's the only thing I would say about that is the defense is different from other areas because you just really need one guy and one guy can take pressure off the rest of the group. It can give you a top pairing. It can answer so many questions for you. Now where they're drafting this year, I'm, I'm going way out on a limb here and guessing it's going to be in the top seven, even when you know the inevitable happens and they, and they lose the lottery. So they're going to be probably looking at defensemen and let's just blue sky this. What if they do? If they get Rasmus Dahlin, to me that changes everything for this organization because he is that guy the Canucks have never had. Even coming in as I don't care if he's eight, I don't care if he's 12, he is that guy they have never had. So that changes everything and, and there are, like I said, they just have to like get lucky or hit on one guy, and whether it's Ole Ulevi, whether it's Ashton Saunders, whoever it is, they can do it. It requires something this organization has never had, but it can be done. But if they don't, and they can't build their plans around winning the draft lottery, they can hope yeah. and have rabbit's feet and whatever they want, but you saw last year, a defenseman went third overall, Miro Hiskin into Dallas, Kale McCarr goes fourth overall to Colorado, neither of those guys stepped into the National yeah. Hockey League right away. Darlene probably can, uh, but beyond that, if they don't get him, okay. then again, we're looking, you know, two years out at the earliest. So we're back to the original question, how long is this going to take? So if they are picking, and I think everybody expects them to be picking somewhere between fifth and eighth, they're probably looking at a group of about four defensemen who will probably be two years away. So I think that's the point where we can start the clock ticking. I know people don't want to hear that based on everything they've been through the last three seasons, but I think that's a realistic expectation. But people have to realize that, and I think that the Canucks would be better off if they were to, and it's a, it's a, just to go back to Bettman again, it's another point that he made, like you need to tell people it is going to take time, like it is, you know, and, and you need to show that you're willing to wait, wait for it, and and maybe they will this off season. Too often, in years past, they've made kind of let's rush it, let's accelerate it, let's try to take a shortcut move. I I really don't want to see, and I don't think the city wants to see moves like that this summer, uh, because a lot of people are pinning this on the goalie, and they do have a really good goalie prospect in Thatcher Demko, but goalies can be unpredictable. And even, even when, even if it's Corey Schneider, even when they're Markstrom, even when they spend years in the AHL, when they arrive to the big leagues, when they arrive to the NHL, it still takes years for them to develop into number one guys you can depend on to win a ton. That's, that's why I want to see Demko in right now so he can get an idea of what he needs to do to improve. Uh, like Vasilevsky, Trent Cole, at Vasilevsky back in the day in Syracuse, and he went up and down and struggled to Tampa Bay. And, uh, he mentioned back then, he thought, oh, like this is kind of making him take step back. But if you look at him now, the steps he took then, what he learned then, how he figured out, okay, this is the guy I need to be to make it in the NHL, 
two, three years later, he's in the Vesna conversation. So I think getting guys into the NHL earlier, goalies, can accelerate that. And this team isn't going anywhere until Demko is a, a bona fide number one guy. And if you look at the roster that they've got, just look at the defenseman right now, uh, project out two years, like, of the guys that they've got, how many would you want on your team if they're starting to get some traction in two years' time? Yeah, it's a great question. And this is where the getting lucky part is because maybe they do get lucky with Derek Pouliot, who has shown and maybe he gets into shape and maybe his skating comes along. Look, there's no answers there. I'm not going to try and sugarcoat it. They might be able to get to a point where they can at least be marginally adequate back there so it doesn't hold back the rest of the development. I know that's damning with faint praise. But that's about where we are with this group. And again, you know, we're looking at probably, a, you know, a lottery pick coming uh, on board again this year. Maybe you levy. So again, in this two, three year window we're talking about, I think that's probably what we're looking at, minus the blind luck factor. The people don't want to hear marginally <laughs> adequate. Unfortunately, well, this is where we are. I, though, isn't absolutely. It? Yes. Isn't this where we are? Yes. Yeah. We're at Woody's Pub is where we are yeah. talking Canucks here on... Uh, uh, province.com